Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and today we're going to work on part two of the uh, door repair here on this 1930 Model A Roadster that I've been tinkering with uh, to help out uh, another guy. So, um, last time we got the bottom of the door all fixed, and we got the door hinges shimmed, and I made these little temporary hinge pins here so we can latch it, got the door to latch, everything's good fitting good now that everything's back up on here I'm pretty happy with it so now the next thing to do is to get this skin mounted on here and see what it's going to take to get the body lines to line up and get everything to jive here in the front uh, which is probably going to take a little bit of work so I'll show you just the way I work through this and the things we run into and hopefully it'll be helpful for you guys along the way all right so I got the inner structure uh, taken off I ground out that top, top little layer this uh, this basically this little lip this sits right in here that's spot welded. Like I said in the first video, it was easier to uh, just sand the spot welds and peel the little piece off. So I got that off and you left this inner structure here. So um, this is the skin that we got. One thing I'll notice, I mean, it seems to be pretty decent quality, but you could tell that a lot of this is done like handmade because I can actually see where they used tin snips to cut this along and it's, you know, looks like it's been hammered and dollied and messed with a little bit. I'm sh seems to me that there's a little bit of dress up and cutting work that's done, you know, before it's sent, but you can even see that the trim comes in. It's not perfect. It, it kind of goes in and then comes back out and, uh, you know, isn't, isn't perfect there. Now, I don't really care because it's folding over on the inside, but um, these, don't expect these, these skins to be like something like Ford would have made. Um, the bottom edge here, they they roll the bead and they kind of like start the bend, but they don't really fully break the edge on it. So it's just kind of like at a 45. So we got to roll that over. But for now, I'm hoping I can just start test fitting stuff. I'm afraid this bottom edge might become a problem with test fitting because it's rolled in. I'd actually almost wish it wasn't broken. But um, so what we can do is this top edge here. It actually fits up in this little groove here, not behind this flange, because like I said, it's spot welded right along there. So, fit this on. See how it fits. I know this top edge is gonna be a little wonky because it was all, especially back here, you can see it was messed with and pulled and hammered and who knows what. So I'd expect that not to be good, but I mean, the skin fits our structure, but down here at the bottom, it definitely needs some pulling a little bit. Looks like the cutouts for the hinges don't exactly match, but maybe I'm wrong here. They're close. So we got the structure in there. I'm just gonna have to figure out a way to clamp it. There we go. But the bottom is a little floppy here just because of where they cut that edge out, I think it leaves it a little loose, but I think it will work. So I'm gonna, yeah, it's not great. So I'm gonna slide this through and see how it fits through the hinges and then we'll maybe put some screws in and see exactly where it's at. All right, so I got the door skin on. I just have the door inner structure and the skin just slid in. I don't actually have the bolts in. They're just kind of like half lined up um, just to do this preliminary check here. So we're gonna have a little bit of trouble because the edges aren't fully turned. So we're gonna be kind of touching a little bit, but more what I'm trying to do is just make sure I can get these body lines. As far as I'm concerned on, the, on these early cars, um, one of the big things that gets overlooked when doing patch panels on these is that the body lines don't match up right. Um, so if you're doing patch panels, you wanna make sure that the beads line up pretty good and um, also the shape of the bead. So if you put a patch panel in from a couple different brands, a lot of times they tend to vary and they vary from the factory. So um, that's why when Aaron was talking about doing all this, one of the doors he didn't wanna do, and I kinda of said he really should because uh, the patch panels on either side of it, the bead's gonna be different completely. So um, I wanna see if this, fits and how 
lines up. So one thing I can see straight away here is just this edge where they bend it over um, to fit that fits in here. It's bent down, but it flares out kind of the wrong way. The, the, it actually should be cut in like this and it's actually flared out that way. This is just normal stuff with patch patterns. I'm not demonizing a, the patch panel company, um, but there's just little things like that you guys have to expect. So what I'm gonna have to do is actually reshape this corner here at the top. I'm probably gonna unbend it and refold the edge over at like a 45 um, because it's going like this way and the car, the way the cut is in the top of the body, it actually is supposed to go that way. So because of that, I can't even get the door to remotely shut. But just looking quickly, I'm looking like the body line right here is lining up pretty good. I was a little worried that uh, with this door being so tweaked, the inner structure and the body being so out of whack, that I was afraid this body line was going to be like, you know, much different than this. And when we first started on the other door, this body line was like, I forget what it was, but it was like way down. Where here I could see it's, it's in the ballpark. Um, down here at the bottom, next to the patch panel that I did, it's really, really close right there. Um, so they're, they're super close and for what this car is, if I can get it to there, that would probably be satisfactory. So it's looking pretty good for the fit of the door as far as the body lines go. The rest of it's just hammering and, and, and dollying and stuff and moving it around. So first thing I'm gonna do is get this door edge here going in the right direction. I'll show you guys a shot of it as I mark it. Um, and then we'll rehammer that and change that, that angle quick. All right, so I can see I just kind of whittled it away there in the center crudely just with the cutoff grinder just to get it where I need it to be. I could sand it a little more as we go, but now I got the clearance. I'm probably gonna have to take a little more off, so I'm gonna probably take one single cut that goes from here back, taking it off on this inside edge, and that should give us the clearance we need. But now I could see it's flowing in. I think it'll roll. I'm gonna have to probably start tapping some of these edges in even though we're not ready to fold the edges over, but just so I can get the clearance to sneak past there. Uh, Cause you can see we're definitely hitting there. So I wanna start tapping these edges in just so I can get the door to pass by the body line. Cause I wanna make sure that this doesn't need some sort of sliver cut as well to pull all that in. Um, so I need to just take the hammer and tap that in a little bit to get it passed. Um, here's something definitely catching, but. Okay, I got the, uh, those edges turned, got the top fitting a little better, and it's basically just touching, uh, the edge of the door is touching on the back side, so we can't close it anymore, but it's right there where it'll latch. Uh, the problem I'm having now is these two different beads are actually slightly different sizes. Uh, before I did a little readjust off camera, this bead was like way lower than, um, than this bead, which was a problem. And I got a little better. It's still a tiny bit low, but it's not as bad. But what I think the problem is, is actually the bend line that they started here is too high. So this whole bead is, is, is basically too small. Um, I think we could probably get that line to, to line up a little better with some adjustment. But um, the biggest thing is, is that this, is, this bead that they created is actually a little smaller. So I think what I'm gonna to have to actually do here is try and copy the, the width of this bead onto our patch panel here. There we go. Yeah, so I got this one right here in the valley of the, of the body line there. And I got it basically right about at the middle of the bend there, right where the crease is. 
and you go on this one, we are like way below. The bead is the, uh, let's see. There we go. Our bend line, it's probably hard to see on camera, is like here. And it should be like down there. So it's probably a good eighth inch or more off. So that's not good. So at least if we make the bead the same width as this one, I can try and cheat this panel up a little bit or even potentially put a little pie cut there. But I really don't want to do that because that starts messing with uh, fixing the door when it starts warping and stuff. So um, if I can change this bend a little bit, it might just be a happy medium. Um, even though I consulted with Aaron and he said it was just fine to leave the beads off, um, it hurts my OCD a little bit. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to try and move this bend down a little bit. So I'm going to take this off, actually run this through the, the, uh, the English wheel to take out this bend and try and smooth it. And then we're going to move, I'll, I'll mark my bend line on both sides the same and it will put in the brake, break that edge and that should get us a little closer there. So I'm going to try and transfer this line over. All right, so there's a bunch of ways you could do this. This is just the way that I thought would be the quickest for me. So I have a, I have a, a flat lower wheel and a flat upper wheel on here. So we're basically just kind of like planishing. Um, so I'm gonna just run this through just to take this line, this hard line out that they started. And then we can make a new one without too much problem here. All right, so I got my line drawn on the back side so we could rebend it. And this line you can see kind of right here. I just drew a line roughly is where the bend line was. So that's the difference in the bead that we're creating here. So uh, definitely quite a bit different. So we're gonna bend on that line and that should give us a closer bead as far as where it breaks on the bottom of the car. the edge uh, I didn't go I went over 45 but didn't go quite full 90 um, and I just want to test fit and see how close this bead now matches with the uh, so I got it hooked underneath there and it is like really really close so I think that did the trick here Let's just there we go I think that did the trick. We're, we're right on. Um, as I pull it, as I bend it 90, it's gonna bring it down a little bit, but I think that's just about right, or really, really close. Much better than it was. So I think that's fixed that problem. Now we can start uh, painting up the rest of this inner structure here. I'm gonna spray some, clean it all up with a wire wheel and then uh, spray it with some uh, Rusty caps later, get it all sealed up, both inside and outside, then we're ready to start skinning it. All right, so I went ahead and painted the whole inner structure that we're gonna be closing up with some textured Eastwood rust encapsulator. Uh, I like using the textured on something like this because it's a little tougher and uh, it will obviously seal up the rust, but also is a little tough, tougher and that textured finish kind of, I just like the look of it on the inner, inner structures like that and hidden areas. I also went ahead and did the inside of the door skin. Uh, obviously we're not gonna get in here and rust proof all this. So I sanded all this down with uh, 80 grit and then I went ahead and sprayed it with, um, with the textured rust encapsulator. Nice thing is you could put it on bare metal, rusted metal, it doesn't really matter. It will seal it all up. So I just used one product for all of those. So now that we know that the door fits good with everything clipped together, what I can do is clip it back together. I'm gonna put it over the hinges 
get everything set in place, and I'm gonna hammer some of the edges over on the car just to make sure that everything stays where it needs to go and get it crimped in place in a couple of the corners. Then we're gonna take it off. I'm actually gonna knock the hinge pins out uh, and take it off with the, the, half the hinges on. Then I can take it on the bench, hammer all the edges over, tack everything, spot weld, blah, 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 do all that stuff. Then put it back on and fingers crossed everything fits. The last thing we have to do at the end here is just uh, is weld up this little sliver that we took out in the top here. I wanna wait to do that until I get the door latching and shut and make sure everything fits how I like. Then we will adjust this little top sliver to how I like it, hit it with the TIG, that'll fill it in and we should be good to go and have a nice door here in a couple of, couple of shots, probably a couple hours. All right, so I got the door skin in and I'm pretty happy with how it all fits. Uh, so the first place I'm going to actually uh, start hammering over is in this corner here. The flange that's sticking out is actually hitting as I'm trying to close it and causing a little bit of binding. So I'm gonna hit that over first, check it, and make sure that it, it swings and fits okay once that's hammered over and then we'll keep working our way. Uh, this edge here uh, definitely is hanging up and causing a problem, so I wanna start um, Hammering on that, make sure everything clears, make sure the door gap stays pretty good um, and it is livable and then we can keep moving on around the way as we go. Um, for hammers, what I like to use for when we're doing the, when I'm hammering or hemming an edge, I have a couple different ones. So I have, this is, uh, I've had these for years. These are old Eastwood uh, body hammers that are fiberglass handles. This is how they come standard. Uh, it's got a shrinking hammer on one end uh, I don't particularly like them or use them at all. Um, so what I've done on this one hammer is actually shaped the face of it. So I ha um, took it and shaped it on the sander and then also shaped this end. So this is a door skinning hammer that's meant for ha hemming over edges like this. And as it comes standard, it's, it's like a flat, kind of wide face. What I've done on this one is made it more of a point so I can get into some tighter areas. Uh, so I use these two and then I also have this guy here that's got like basically a round, this is an old, I think it's an old Craftsman from the 50s or something, but this is one of the ones that's kind of neat that I have, uh, has a real small round head on one end and it's got the rounded edge on the other. So again, you can get into some tight areas, but it also helps with hammering and hemming over those edges. saw just a little bit, just basically got it past 90, uh, so it was kind of heading in. What that allows me to do is clear this. There's an area where it was hitting here, here, up here, where I was trying to close the door, it was making it seem like it fit like crap. But you can see now, the door swings nice and smooth. I haven't touched this back edge at all here. In fact, it's still kind of floppy. I'm letting that alone for now. The nice thing with Model A's uh, is that the body, uh, the doors actually overlap the rear quarter panel. So uh, unless you're building some kind of super high-end um, Grand National type car or grade eight type car, uh, you don't have to really worry about the door gaps in the back side. Of course, there'll be door gaps on the inside, but most average guy cars like what we're building here, we don't have to worry about door gaps on the inside terribly. Um, so I'm kind of just leaving this backside kind of flop around to do its thing as I'm tapping here, just to make sure that everything's kind of sitting how I want. Um, there we go. So I gotta make sure everything, that was, I didn't hammer that bottom edge there and it was kind of unclipping itself. So we gotta make sure this all fits. So, um, so what I'll do from here is to start working on adjusting that bottom edge there a little bit more. Um, and then we could start working around this other corner, trap it in a little bit and uh, yeah, we should be on our way. All 
All right, so now uh, that I got the front kind of roughed in, it seems okay. Now what I, I'm gonna do, uh, the, the bottom actually clears and goes under the sub rail here, so I'm safe there that uh, I'm not gonna adjust that till the very end. <clears throat> so now what I can do is work on this back side. So I wanted to show you guys, it's a little easier to show here. Um, when you're hemming an edge like this, a uh, couple things that I do. So I use these little pinch weld clamps versus using the big like vice grip style panel clamps because what happens is you tend to dent the panel when you grab in with those and, and pinch real hard just because they're so big, there's so much leverage. You don't even know it when you go to clip one of those shut. It tends to put little dents all around the door and when you go to do your body work, you'll see all these dents around the whole perimeter where you actually did your, uh, your, your hemming over and that could be a problem. I know that because I've done it more than once. <laughs> so what I like to use is these these are little Eastwood pinch weld clamps. Um, I slide these over. If, there, if there's enough room, you could slide them over the edge of your door. And all I do is just to keep it from flopping around, I will tighten it up just a little bit, just, just snug basically, so that it'll, it'll keep the panel from flopping around here. Um, I don't want to go too crazy, because we don't want to, again, dent the door too much, or at all. Actually, at all, I should say, not too much. It ends up happening for us mortals. So I got that all nice and tight. Everything looks tight in here. So I can work on hammering this edge. I'm gonna start up top and kind of work my way down. And then as I get down to the bottom, I can work on trapping this edge in. I usually just check this bottom edge as I'm hammering to make sure that it's coming in or it's not floating back out on me. But having a little clamp there helps just uh, give you some peace of mind. So for actually doing the hammering, what I like to do is I have a heel dolly, it's the one I use most commonly, and I keep that on the back side of the panel here, like this, supporting where you're hammering. Um, so you can use whichever hammer you choose. This one, uh, again, is how it comes from Eastwood. It's a little on the fat side, so sometimes on doors like this where it's smaller, it's harder to get this in here to get a good swing and you end up hitting where you don't want. So that's why I have the smaller ones, like this one here. And then I have the one over here that I made that's a little thinner. So it just gives me that little peace of mind I'm not gonna hit and damage something, especially on the first, first pass where you're just trying to knock the edge over. So we'll start up here, support the back side. Staying away from that top corner here where we still have that little pie cut we took out, we have to fix. So I'm gonna stay away from that. So I'm pushing in, and I'm kind of hammering in just to knock it down over the edge. And we're pushing in pretty hard with our dolly hand because I don't want the panel to bow out as we're, as we're doing this. So I usually give some pretty good pressure. We're just trying to get this edge to fold over. get past 90. Again, I don't usually hammer this whole edge over all the way until I'm really, really sure, because it is a pain in, pain in the butt to get that unhemmed un, um, if something goes wrong. So that's why I like to just go around, get it so it's locked in, and I can take it off the car without having to worry about it moving around. So that's hemmed over past 90. All right. So looking pretty good. It's obviously, I don't have it hemmed all the way, so it's still touching, but now we can get closer to latching the door. Uh, the door's still hitting the latch right away without me doing anything crazy. So it feels, feels pretty good. I um, think it still needs a little adjustment down here at the bottom, but that could also be where it's hitting and holding the door out up here. Um, so I think after we hem that edge and everything shuts, it will pull everything nice and tight just like we want. Uh, there's a little low spot right here, but the nice thing is we can actually work that little low spot out when we're done. Uh, I think we can knock that out. So, but I'm gonna work on 
hem in the rest of this edge, and then we can get this thing to latch. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll put a sandbag on something like this. I have a blanket down on this little, uh, it's actually my sandbag bench, but it works really nice for these little roadster doors because um, I can get all around all the edges. Uh, so I use a, a sandbag to hold the weight down so that the thing, you know, when you're by yourself, you need a third hand. So I use the sandbag to hold it down and then we could focus on just holding up and tapping these edges over. All right, so I got the door latching. Pretty happy with everything overall. Uh, we're not going too crazy on this car like I mentioned, but we want everything to latch and at least sort of look good. <laughs> um, so what I'm gonna do is just try and hammer and adjust this little sliver here. So I'm gonna, want to obviously leave a decent gap between there, something like that. So I'm gonna just twist it to get it sitting flat and then I'll just lay a little bit of filler rod in there. And uh, we should have a door that opens and shuts and fits pretty decent. Alright, so there we have it. We have a non-bullet ridden, wavy, smashed up door uh, that is also not rotten on the inside structure. So uh, this was a long uh, project to fix something like this and even though this, uh, this took so long, it's still what I would call like 80% good. Uh, you could spend another week trying to make everything perfect on the car and line everything up. Uh, there's a couple little spots in the corners where the patch panels kind of line up and they're not quite perfect. Like I said, with the beads being different, I did the best I could with modifying the, uh, the patch panels to try and make them work together. But the extra like 30 hours to make the door like perfect uh, probably isn't worth it for what Aaron wants to do with the car. So uh, I'm happy with what it is. Uh, if he wants to do a little bit more body work at the end to make it a little nicer, he can most certainly do that. But the major part is done. Uh, the last couple shots you saw me, I was welding up that top sliver that we did. Ended up building up that corner just a little more with filler rod to get it the uh, line up a little bit better right here at the reveal. Uh, this has had a bunch of work done to the car. Like we said, it was moved without some bracing. So there's some stuff that's not perfect on here as I expected. I build it up a little bit so there's enough material there that you could sand it, blend it, and uh, it should work just fine. But again, we have a latching door. The gaps look half decent for what it is. Uh, I didn't really touch anything on the gaps here, just kind of fit it up and made it as good as I could. Um, and uh, But overall, it's really good for this car. Now we have another door to do, uh, horrible patch here that we gotta fix, but uh, the doors are probably the biggest part of this project. As anybody knows, uh, the messes with these things 
Original Roadster doors can get very expensive. So if you have doors that are salvageable like this, you could save a couple of bucks, spend your time, do it yourself, and uh, you might have something that's pretty decent and you saved a couple bucks in the end. So thank you guys for following along. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. Um, and uh, if we keep doing more of these types of projects, I'll definitely film them and uh, keep sharing them with you guys. Thanks guys, catch you later.